There are some common mistakes I see folks make over and over again when it comes to carburetors and tuning, and it makes it practically impossible to get it right. So today, let's talk about those so you don't make the same mistakes. Let's go. Now, it doesn't matter what type of aftermarket carburetor you're talking about, whether it's the Edelbrock Performer or AVS 2 Series, the new VRS, Quick Fuel Proform, Holly. They're all pretty much the same in some of the basic things that you need to do to get them to run right. And there's some mistakes that people overlook or make over and over and over again when it comes to the tuning side of the carburetor. Now, tuning's not a difficult process. We've got some other videos coming on that here very soon, but... You have to set yourself up for success, and if you don't, you set yourself up for failure, and that's certainly not an option when it comes to trying to get these things running optimally, whether you're looking for the most amount of performance, whether it's drag racing, road racing. If you're just looking for a good street cruiser carburetor and you don't want your garage to stink of fuel all the time and run rich and blow black smoke out of the back of the car, whatever the case may be, that opportunity exists, but you have to be able to do things correctly to get these to get to that point where you want to make it. And there's some mistakes that people make that they just seem to get wrong over and over again. So today we're going to talk about the top four things that people kind of overlook or kind of get wrong and what we can do to kind of correct it and make sure you set yourself up for success. These are going to be in no particular order, but the one of the biggest things that people make the mistake on is th assuming that initial carb adjustments is tuning of the carburetor, and it's not. If you're setting idle mixture screws, changing power valves or step-up springs, setting idle speed, none of those are tuning. Those are initial basic setups to the carburetor. Now, every adjustment on a carburetor isn't fixed. You don't set idle mixture once. You don't set idle speed once. You don't change power valves once. Uh, they're all adjustable. They're stuff that you will probably come back to and may make further tuning adjustments to, but the initial setup of the carburetor is not tuning. It is just the basics. It's just getting you set to the point where you can begin the tuning process. So assuming that initial carburetor adjustments is tuning, it, I, get, I ask that question all the time. Hey, what have you done to tune the carburetor? If they're having an issue with a hesitation, a bog, too much fuel, running rich, running too lean, whatever the case may be, it's the first question I ask because I want to know if you've made that power valve change, if you know or if you've made a jet change or a rod change, whatever the case may be, those are just initial adjustments. So always keep that in mind that you have to get the carburetor set up. Now, I did a basic video on how to do the initial setup on a carburetor. I'll link that video above so you can uh, go check that one out if you need to. But really, it's just, it's the basics. So don't assume that those initial adjustments are tuning. It's not. It All it is is just the basics before you get to the tuning process. The next one is really probably the biggest one on the list, and that's not starting with the ignition system or timing first. Timing is the number one issue that I see with carburetor that carburetor owners make. It's generally not enough. I get asked that question all the time. You know, when again, when someone's having problems with something, the first question is, okay, tell me about the basic setup and then tell me what your timing is set at. And I get that very, very frequently. Somebody goes, yeah, the timing is set. It's good. Okay, give me a number. Tell me what the number is. That's the critical thing. If you're a, you know, small block Chevy and a whatever, doesn't even matter what it is, small block Ford, uh, in a Mustang truck, doesn't matter. You've got to have enough timing for it. Today's fuel is not the same as it was back in the 19, you know, 60s, early 70s, mid 70s, thank goodness. And having enough timing is really the basics of everything that's going to revolve around how the carburetor tunes. If you don't have enough of it, it's going to be difficult to do the timing. Now I am down closer to sea level. I always st start with 12 to 14. The GMC truck is at 14 degrees before top dead center. That is my initial starting point with it. The engine starts well, idles well, got good vacuum. It's everything that that truck wants. Now, is that where I'm gonna leave it at when I'm done tuning this carburetor? Maybe, maybe not. I may add a little bit more timing to it. I may take a little bit more away. It really all depends on what the engine wants, but not giving it enough timing is certainly the big one. Now, 
the other side of that too is elevation comes at play. I mentioned I'm at sea level. If you're above 3000 feet and as you continue to go higher in elevation, you're going to need to add more timing. There's less oxygen in the air, takes a little bit more time. You need to start that process a little bit quicker in the chamber. And if you don't do that, if you're at eight degrees before top dead center, six, whatever the factory recommended way back in the day, it's not going to be enough time. You're going to run into issues with it running, you know, rich or lean or whatever the case may be, depending on what elevation you're at. So always take that into consideration. It's certainly, again, the number one uh, problem is timing. And right along with that, say, ignition system, you've got to have the right system for what you're working on. Now, in the GMC truck, just a cruiser, driver, very standard, very inexpensive HEI, uh, good wires, good plugs, making sure everything's routed correctly. That's the only thing that that truck needs. Now, the Chevelle will be a little bit different. It will have an adjustable tuning system or ignition system on it where I can go through and, and look at all those things individually, adjust them with the laptop, and uh, make sure that it's got enough because I've got, I'll have a lot more cylinder pressure. The driving will be a lot more aggressive on that vehicle, and certainly I'll want to have the ability to change and monitor those things as needed. So making sure that your ignition system matches is what you're doing is a very big key. The next thing that folks make the mistake on is the fuel system. Not paying enough attention to what the support that the carburetor needs will certainly set yourself up for failure. A fuel system that's not having a pressure regulator. It doesn't matter what type of fuel pump you have. I get that question a lot where folks say, well, I've got a, a stock style uh, mechanical fuel pump. It should be fine. It might be, but you won't know unless you put a regulator and a gauge on there and you have adjustment over what's going on with it. When you don't have the ability to, to adjust something and correct it and make it better or take away a problem, you lose all that ability to tune it. So not having a, a, a good regulator and a gauge is certainly a big part of it. Not having enough filters or the right filters. I, I see that very frequently where folks will put filters in the wrong location in the fuel system. They won't have enough. I run two fuel filters. I want run one right before the pump that is typically on a carbureted application, either a 10 or a 40 micron. The truck has a 10 micron on there now currently. And then between the tank and the pump and that first filter, I run a 100 micron to catch all the big nasty stuff closer to the tank. Is it overkill? A little bit, but when you have good clean fuel getting up to the carburetors then you're, or carburetor, then you're going to have a better opportunity for that thing to run correctly. So get yourself right on the fuel filters and you shouldn't have any problem with it. Incorrect pump is another one where someone will run a too small of a fuel pump. Uh, these little pumps from Edelbrock are great for, you know, very low horsepower, not high RPM, not really aggressive performance systems, but you can't expect a 60 or $70 pump that only puts out 38 gallons per hour to meet what you're, what you're trying to do. So get the correct pump on there to match the power delivery that you're trying to get. Not enough fuel delivery or not the correct amount of fuel at the right time is, is certainly a big one. And we get that very frequently where someone will, you know, say that they're struggling. It's, it's losing, you know, falls on its face at 4,000 RPM. It idles okay. It, it sometimes it cruises okay. Sometimes it's got a little bit of a stumble hesitation. If you don't have a big enough pump or the correct size pump on it, you run into issues. Now, I prefer putting the pump in the tank. I've done quite a few videos on that topic in the past. Uh, certainly, it's the best situation for the pump because it runs in a very controlled environment where it's cool, it's got plenty of fuel, there shouldn't ever be an issue with getting the the correct push of fuel up to the filters and regulator but it is certainly a big part of it so don't neglect the fuel system don't assume it's always correct just because it was right before or the car starts and and and, and idles okay we're trying to match it for the rest of the system and the rest of what you're doing with it so making sure you got the correct amount of fuel deliver delivery is a very big part of this the last one is kind of a different one because people will just assume that that making big changes uh, is a correct way to go. If you've got a really, really aggressive uh, lean condition or rich condition and you're trying to get a, a richer or leaner condition in the carburetor, making too big of an adjustment 
makes you bounce around too much after that. Make small steps. If you're on a 4150 style carburetor and you feel like you need more primary jet and you go from a 67 up to a 90, it's too much. You're going to bounce perhaps back and forth. And the problem with that is, one, you waste a lot of time, but overfueling is certainly a big part of getting a carburetor adjusted correctly. I see that very, very frequently when I get carburetors in for rebuild where they're thick with black deposits because too much fuel is trying to be pushed through that carburetor. And you have to consider everything downstream. What's it doing to the spark plugs? How is that affecting their operation? What's it doing to the oil? Oil does not, and fuel are not compatible. Fuel will d destroy the, the additive package in fuel very, very quickly. So you've got to make sure that you're not running it too rich, especially in an environment where you're not changing the oil frequently. Now, if it's a, a drag car and, and, and you're running rich purposely because you're on a, uh, on a stage nitrous system or you're even NA and you're just trying to make sure that you get to the big end of the track and at the upper RPM and you're not running out of fuel, that's fine. You know, being a little rich is not a bad thing, but typically on those cars, you're changing the oil very frequently, either once a weekend or a couple of times on a weekend, depending on what type of fuel you're running. If you're running alcohol, it's even worse. On a street car, you're not changing oil that often. So you don't want to make those big, huge steps. Take little tiny steps. Now, Edelbrock's got that nice tuning chart that they have for their Performer and AVS series carburetors. What a great tool that is because it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it for you. All is you have to determine is what direction you want to go. Do you want it to be richer or leaner, whatever the case may be, but take small steps. We've talked about that very frequently on this channel uh, when talking about tuning of these carburetors. So it doesn't, it crosses over to whatever other style of carburetor as well. If, if it's the, the VRS or the uh, 4150 style Holly, it does not matter. Take small steps. The carburetor will be much happier with the performance and what you're asking it to do. At the end of the day, carburetor tuning is just really about the ability to get the most out of the vehicle and the engine so it runs right, operates at the performance level that you need, and doesn't cause too many excessive issues. Now, it's a carburetor. It's always going to be a little bit uh, cumbersome, you know, sometimes with tuning processes or if you drive it a lot and you go across multiple elevations and all those little details can sometimes make a, a bit of an issue with it, but they still run okay. It's not like they just shut off if you get to 7,000 feet in New Mexico, but yeah, it's just always makes it a little bit more difficult process. So if you set yourself up for success and avoid some of those issues and not think of it in terms of hey, these are great right out of the box. There's no such thing. Please don't ever get stuck into that. What you're doing at that point is you're bolting it on. If it starts, it runs right. You monkey around with the idle mixture screws and that's it. All you're really doing is tolerating what it's giving you. It may run okay. It may not backfire or sputter or, or dump a bunch of raw fuel down the, you know, down the <laughs> intake or it might, but what you're doing is putting up with it. Tune it, make the adjustments that you need to do it, but set yourself up so you're going to be able to get it done right with the correct ignition and timing and, and fuel system and not making really great big huge steps across the, the, the boundaries to, you know, try to make adjustments. So, but yeah, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them down below. I'd love to answer them for you. And hopefully that video gave you a few ideas of what you need to do to set yourself up for success. Now, if you want more detailed videos on any of those, I will leave a link to those in, down in the description below so you can take a look at those individually because there's a lot of detail that come into some of those. So anyway, we'll catch you guys on the next one. We'll see you.